I have never tried uh, this message. Is, is it? Is it? Uh, got it. Is it bright enough? Should I bring my lamp a bit closer? Excuse me. Is it uh, bright enough? Um, it is. Uh, I think it, um, more light is appreciated. Mm -hmm. Wait there a second. All right, so good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hello. How is everybody? I bet everyone is fine. Everyone's awesome. Okay. How is your Sunday, everyone? Good evening, good evening. Right, good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. And we are here again at the reflection. All right, so uh, before we start, uh, I just want to bring uh, to you what the reflection is all about. So we all about storytelling, all about sharing knowledge, and we appreciate every story because we believe that every story is worth telling all right so um i'm so happy today uh because i have uh, my friends here uh joseph uh, joseph has been friends with me for a while and um we were uh co-workers uh when i was at ac and uh please join me to welcome joe Hi hello good evening joe thank you good evening Mene. good to see you again good to see you man thank you so much for being here with us today um tell us how you feel uh, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, happy to happy to speak to you guys and try to share some of my experiences. Hopefully, help a few guys who are thinking about uh, maybe studying or working in in Europe one day. So yeah, mm -hmm. All right, very, very good. good. Yeah. Okay, so I think our viewers are wondering um, who you are and why you're here on on uh, on the show with us. Uh, can can you just uh, briefly introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, okay, so uh, my name is uh, Joseph, um, or Joe for short, uh, my mm -hmm. friend usually call me Joe. Um, I'm a native English speaker, native English teacher. Right. Um, from the southeast of England, uh, a little place called Kent. Um, it's about one hour south of London, so right. very close to London. Um, I was teaching in England for about 18 months before I moved to Southeast Asia. Uh, I moved here because I was uh, backpacking around. I'd been to a few countries. I went to Thailand and Vietnam and the Philippines. Um, and then I stumbled across Cambodia and sort of fell in love with the country and the people and ended up staying. Um, I was supposed to be backpacking for three months. And I ended up giving my mum a phone call and telling her I was staying. <laughs> so, and four and a half years later, here I am. All right. So, uh, so what, what did your mum say? What did your mum say about you staying here? <laughs> she said one word. She said, what? <laughs> she, she couldn't believe it, but uh, she was happy that I was happy and um having a new experience and doing something with my life. So yeah, all she right. was supportive. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think uh, this is all about why you are here on the show today, because we need your real experience going uh, out of your comfort zones and trying to explore the world, right? Okay, you got to... Okay, so everybody, Joe is about to share with us his awesome experience. And I think that will give you guys um, a lot of insight uh, on how uh, a person can leave his or her comfort zones and try to explore himself, right? Okay, so um, Joe, you were uh, you mentioned you live in England, right? Okay, for uh, almost the rest of your life back then. Yeah, right. and it's then awesome. you moved, yeah. and then you moved out. I think leaving your hometown is not as easy as changing the food every day, right? <laughs> so t tell us why you decided to leave. Um, if I'm honest, I was just. I was just bored. Um, just bored. That's what you said. I, I was. I was a bit bored. I think. I think everybody um, is is slightly unappreciative of, of where they're from. I think so. Um, 
so when you when you hear of some fascinating places but then you speak to the people who are actually from there mm -hmm. they're always more interested in in somewhere else and i've always uh, had a fascination with with asian culture mm -hmm. um and um me and my friends have always wanted to sort of see southeast asia um there there were shows on on english tv um about thailand and things like that so yeah, I just, I just sort of had a, a fascination and uh, and just wanted the new experience, really. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, um, did you learn about Cambodia before you came here? <laughs> if I'm honest, I, I mean, okay. To make it sure, like, did you even know about Cambodia when you left your country? I I knew the country, but I'll be honest, I didn't know too much about it <laughs> at all. I didn't know too much about it. However, um. I've got a very close friend who actually moved here a few years before me. So I always had the intention of, of coming to visit to see mm -hmm. him. Um, but to be honest, I didn't know too much about it. Um, as you probably know, uh, in the West, it's mainly Thailand that we hear of and Vietnam um, in Southeast Asia. They're, they're the main places that people go yes, on, yes. on holidays to. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like I said, I, I was in Thailand first, but I prefer it here. Yeah, so, all right. So yeah, but I know, my right? Friend, my, my friend who was living here before me, he had a big influence on me um, staying here mm -hmm. um, as well. So. What did you learn from your friends? What did you learn from your friends that made you stay here? Um, it's a good question. I, I don't think I learned anything particularly from them. It, it was more it was more Cambodian people, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. So I, right. I've been to a lot of a lot of different countries, um, but you guys seem to make people feel very welcome here. You're very open and friendly, and um, just a really relaxed atmosphere compared to some places. Right. In the world. So all right, yeah, appreciate it, man. Appreciate yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. Us, like I have always thought about Cambodian as uh, friendly. Uh, how do we say it? How do we put it? A friend is neighbors, right? Okay. Um, I think I think we we like um, uh, something fun. We like to live happily together, right? So um, let me just uh, ask you a few more questions about your place before we talk about you moving out of your place, right? So, uh, well, you've been here for for a while. How many years? Almost five. Almost five years in Cambodia. Years, yeah. All right. So, but how long have you left your country? Um, about five and a half. So you thought. spent, uh huh. So you spent like a half years outside of Cambodia, and then you ended up in Cambodia and stay here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Are you going to stay here forever? I maybe. Think so. Maybe not. <laughs> I, no, 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 I think so. Um, I don't have any plans to leave um, mm -hmm. anytime soon. Um, right. I'm pretty happy here still, so okay. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I hope, I hope you stay here with <laughs> us. <laughs> okay, so um, what did you miss the most in your country? When, because you stay here for like half a decade already. Mm. What I miss the most? It will probably have to be hanging out with my friends. It's All probably right. my, my friends and family. Um, yeah. Friends and family. Yeah. What do you, I think, because I have never been to to England, right? Actually, I have never been to many places, right? Uh, England is included. So, um, what do people normally do there? In England, yes, um, people usually work a lot, um, moan about the weather. <laughs> um, How's the weather, right? Okay, that's what they they ask, right? How's the weather? I think is it stereo time? Like people call, people ask, people open the conversation. How's the weather? Is it true there? Um, but it's more of a stereotype. Yeah, but we, we we do like to moan about it. Um, but yeah, yeah the I weather's think. the weather's good for about uh maybe three months of the year. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, uh, the rest of the time, it's just very grey and rainy and cold. Right. I heard that it rains a lot in London. Is it true? It does. It, it, it's different than here, though. So 
when it rains here, it will rain for like two hours and stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In England, it will rain from morning to night. So uh -huh. a bit different, yeah. Right. Sometimes, sometimes I enjoy the, um, the rainy seasons when I can stay at home and enjoy my stuff, you know, doing yeah. some, of my, some of my stuff and watch Netflix. Yeah, it's nice sometimes. You would like England then if you like the rain. I really want to go there some, some days, maybe in the future. Maybe go and visit your family. Yeah, why not? Yes. I, I yes. could introduce you. Yeah, I could show you the way if you ever go. Could show you um, around. Yeah. Okay, so um, you you left your country to work and live in other countries, right? Okay. Tell tell us how you really felt when you stepped on um, an alien country for the first time. Um, when I first, well, when I first, the first country I, I, I went to was uh, Thailand mm -hmm. and I, I left uh, in December. So December is, is freezing in England. Mm -hmm. So I was in like a coat and jeans. I was, I was wrapped up warm because getting to the airport in England, it was like maybe minus one degrees. So it's really cold in December. Um, and I just remember getting off of the plane in Thailand and the doors opening. And it just being like an oven was open, just suddenly a heat wave came in. Um, but I, I was just, I was super excited. I was super happy. I felt really free. Um, just, yeah, happy and excited, I think, are the two main main feelings. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought you would feel so like, oh, this is so hot. This is not the place I'm going. No, not <laughs> at all. No, I, it, it was amazing. Um, I mean, I've been to a lot of places in Europe, but mm. I've never been to this side of the world. So oh, right. it was a new experience, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have, you ex have you experienced any culture shocks here? I mean, um, throughout the Asia country. Culture shocks? Um, I mean, there's, there's some differences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some differences. Um, culture shocks. Have you experienced any? I, I have. I'm just trying to think of what they would be. So, um, hmm. <laughs> so I think here, um, right. as I mentioned earlier, things are, people are a lot more friendly. So if you're just walking down the street, I've noticed people like to to stare. They like to make eye yes. contact. Um, whereas in England. If you stare for too long, it's sort of like a, a confrontation. It's sort of people, people get a bit defensive about it. Um, so when I first came here and I, I noticed people staring at me and I'd look away and then I'd look back to check and they would still be looking at me. I thought, but has this guy got a problem? But um, then I realized that people are just interested and, and, and super nice and friendly. Um, so that was culture different, sort of the staring. Yeah. Um, I think they just like learning about those foreigners. I think so, yeah. Yes. I think like, so. Um, I, I, uh, since I was young, I think um, I was doing the same thing uh, like what you described, right? When, whenever I saw foreigners, I just, uh, I was following them, just watching how they do, because, they, um, <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't know uh, it was like um, a different, um, I mean, I mean, I didn't know if it was offensive to them or maybe they didn't like it or not, but we Cambodian, I don't know, uh, this is just my opinion. I like watching them people because they look different. They look taller, they have different skins, color. And normally yeah, I, yeah. I saw backpackers, you know, people, I was wondering, uh, these guys are so weird where they're carrying a lot of things, <laughs> right? Aren't they tired or what? Careful about following weird people around, Manet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I, am, talking, I understand. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Talking about people, right? Okay. Um, how do you def uh, how do you tell the difference? I mean, how do I say this? Um, can you describe people in England comparing to people in Asia? I mean, what is the major problem? Uh, what's, what's the major difference they have? Do you think, in your opinion? um i th i think that you guys are just a lot more friendlier um i think i think it might have something to do with the weather like when Maybe. the weather's raining all day and gray people sure. are in a bad mood and and also england is quite expensive 
So really? a lot of people are, are working long hours just to pay their bills sort of thing. So that might contribute to it. Um, but another, going back to your point on culture shock, um, I don't know if it was shock, but what I really like surprise. About out here, surprise, yeah. What yeah. I like about out here is how um, sort of open everything is. So people will sort of eat and just hang out outside and mm-hmm. talk. And that's really nice. Um, but in England, it's sort of like you say hi to your neighbours and then you're straight in your house, door shut. You don't really see people just hanging out outside and things. It's not that open. So that was another thing that was, I suppose, surprise, but in a good way. Right, right. Yeah. So um, talking about people, I, I, I would like to share a little bit of my experience. Um, uh, right, I have been to two different countries, but which is a, a short trip, right? Okay. But the, the main trips that I, I, I think um, that influenced me the most is chain the place from my hometown to Phnom Penh. Actually, it's in the same country, but different yeah. place to live, right? Um, back, back in my place, Rotanaku province, if, if everybody knows about it, I, I am from Rotanaku province. So back then when I was young, my, uh, the neighborhood that I were living in, we were so friendly. We share food almost every meal, morning, afternoon, evening, um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After cooking, we normally just spare some little part of our foods and give it to our neighbors, and they do the same thing, right? Okay, friendly, after work, we say hi. Um, in the evening, we went out of the house and sat down and talked, something like that, right? When I moved to Phnom Penh in 2010, I experienced different things. People just, they, they don't even, um, like in 2010, when I came to Phnom Penh, I experienced something like this. Um, people were not friendly, at least to me, because I was from a more friendly or a friendlier neighborhood, right? And you said uh, people in Cambodia, especially in Phnom Penh, are friendly, right? If you, if you have a chance to go to my place, right? I'll yeah. introduce to you a, a friendlier neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, people in Phnom Penh, normally they just um, go to work and come back. They don't really have time for chit chats and things like that. That's what I thought when I came first. And after that, when I made a lot of friends in Phnom Penh, um, my perspective started to change a little bit. So now I have some friends to talk to. So I don't really feel lonely anymore. Okay. I think it's quite a similar experience, right? Um, it would be so wonderful if I could live and probably work in a different country so I can experience what you are talking about here. Yeah, and I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, no, I, I think you, you'd get on fine living in a, in a foreign country. I've said to you before, um, and p- people over this side of the world are generally so so friendly and polite and respectful. Um, mm. But I think you could, you could fit in anywhere if you carried on being, like I said, respectful and, and friendly. And um, yeah, you'd fit in right. fine. Yeah. Yeah, so um, if you respect other people, I think you will get the respect back. I think that's so, yeah. all about oh, right? Okay. right so um joe well, we talk about people here so how about you share with us your experience um in terms of living and working here in cambodia um okay where do i begin so i've i've worked at ace mm-hmm. school um, yeah. and i still do um very happy there it's very good um great staff great colleagues um They've done really well at, at flipping over to online mm-hmm. to, since the pandemic. They treat their staff well. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy there. Um, apart from that, I've, I've actually been close to your hometown. I've been to Mondokiri, but I haven't been able to go to Ratnakiri yet. Um, I'd like to, but I've done a lot of traveling around um, sort of the main provinces, Kampok, Kep, Siem Reap. Mm. Um, Mondokiri, Kampong Cham, sort of the main ones. Um, yeah. yeah. It sounds like you like it a lot here. I do, yes. All right. Have a working um, experience. Uh, do people work differently from your place, uh, from, uh, from London? Okay. Um, they do work, work in London. Um, it's a bit more full on in the sense of it's very difficult to live in any major city um, on an average wage. So most people don't actually live um, in the main cities. They live slightly outside. So uh, you have to commute in and out of work. So 
Um, typically, usually a usual job in England, you're working for eight hours usually, um, but then you've got to add on the commute time. So mm. on average, an hour to get to work and an hour back. So your day is about 10 hours with a one hour lunch break. Mm. So I would be prepared for that. Um, what else? What else? Um, I, I don't want to I don't want to sound rude um, <laughs> in, in London, in London, things are really um, and in, in England in general, pe- things are very efficient when it comes to mm. work. Like, yes, uh, you've got to be on time. Mm-hmm. Um, if something needs to be done, it has to be done properly or sort of like the the, the company will, will get in big trouble. So people are usually very sort of efficient and um yeah, you, you you have to you have to expect uh, the expectations are quite high of you generally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think I think because of this system, because of the belief, um, that's why it, uh, that's what makes um, uh, England great. That's what makes England so developed, right? Okay. So I think we should learn. Um, we should learn to do that. We should learn to respect times, um, being punctual, and um, if if something uh, has to be done, should be done properly. Right. So I think that's this. These are all good things that we, we can learn. Right. I think uh, when you talk about commuting like one or two hours from from your house to your um, workplace and people here in Cambodia complaining about driving traffic jams like <laughs> for like 15 minutes, something like that, you know, and we oh, live no, in no, the, no. <laughs> we live in the like, bis- uh, what, how do we call it? Business district. Right. We live yeah. inside in the middle of the city. Yeah. Like me, I only walk like five minutes from my place to my workplace, and I don't You're have anything lucky. to complain about. <laughs> yeah, when that that was a cultural shock for me. So um, you've just reminded me. So when I first came here, I, I had uh, I met some Cambodian friends who who me and my Western friends used to play football with, mm-hmm. um, and I remember once uh, that all of my friends, my Cambodian friends, complaining that that somewhere that we was going to was really far. And I was thinking, oh no, like we're gonna have to get on a bus for two hours. Anyway, people convinced them and we ended up going and it was like 15 minutes on a bike. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that was a culture shock for me. Things right. on that. Yeah. All right. So as as you know that um Lumpen is not that big, right? Okay, the other side to the other side is pretty close. You you probably spend like 20 minutes at most, and you can get to anywhere, Starbucks, right? brown coffee and yeah 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 and everything it's it's what you're used to i mean i mean in england um i used to for my first job i would drive for about one hour and then because there would be nowhere to park Mm. in the main city next to my work so you'd have to park and get a bus into your actual work so it was an hour drive and then about a 20 minute bus journey and then you'd have to walk so about another 10 minutes mm-hmm. so all together it's about an hour and a half just to get to work yeah all right i don't mean to be rude but to me yeah. that's very depressing oh it was Man. that might be yeah that what might be why uh why you guys are, are more calm and relaxed and laid uh, back yeah, yeah. And laid back yeah that's mm. that's a good thing we lay yeah. back sometimes we do too much so we gotta work later <laughs> We are in the comfort zone. I think people should experience something like this, living outside of the city and come to work and then go back to, to your home or to your place so that you appreciate your home more. Maybe so, but but yes. Manette, when we used to work together, you you was always punctual and, and everybody, <laughs> if all the Khmer stuff were always we were trying. We were working in a in a good place, man. We gotta show yeah. people yes. Right. Yeah. Um cycling. I, I used to cycle a lot, right? When when I was at AC. And yeah, I love that, but I don't have time to cycle now. Maybe I give myself too too many excuses not to cycle. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should change that. So, do you exercise? Um, yeah, well, as best I can now due to everything being closed. Um, but yeah, I think I think exercise is super important. Um, now I'm just doing some press ups and sit ups and stuff on my rooftop. Um, yeah, so I think you should right. always keep fit. Well, we're talking about um, physical exercise, so talking about physical education. Yeah. In your um, background, you mentioned that you were uh, 
professional trainer, mm -hmm. right? Share with us a little bit of, uh, of your uh, background, like a karate, something like that. So very interesting. Okay, okay. So yeah, my, my father got me involved in uh, martial arts when I was about six or seven years old. Um, and I'd done, so I'd done karate. Mm -hmm. um, it might be why I've got a fascination with, with Asian culture perhaps mm. because I studied a, a Japanese style of karate. Did, did um, you watch, um, excuse me, did, did you watch a karate, a karate kid? I, I did, but um, it, it gives it gives karate a bad name. Some of really? Those <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's not, not quite like, or it, it wasn't quite like that in the past. Now it's got quite soft, I think. If uh -huh. you need to find a good club, but there's a lot more rules when it comes to um, how hard you can sort of train kids but mm -hmm. when I first started it it was super disciplined um and it was really really physical um one of the reasons why I actually stopped doing it it became sort of more like a, a play school uh which I didn't like so um but yeah but I I've done karate all together for about 11 years um I got to second dan black belt uh, I coached it for two years um, and, and I fought for England in 2007 um, at Crystal Palace. Uh, well, so I represented my country. Um, yeah, so, so that, that was my, my main sport. Mm. So those experiences bring you to become an English teacher. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, so, so how that linked. Okay, so... After I graduated from university, um, mm -hmm. I was really lucky to get a job at the uh, sister college of the mm -hmm. university yeah. um, as a sports development officer. Um, cool. So basically, basically that the sports development officer um, has to try to gain funding um, to basically facilitate and promote sports to all the subcategories of students within the college. Um, so... I really enjoyed that job. It was it was a really good job. Um, and they were really good to me because as I was doing that, they also paid for me to do my, my teaching course. Mm -hmm. um, so I or part time um, for two years. I'd done my my teaching qualification um, and that's how I, I got into teaching. Right. I started teaching at the college. Yeah. Right. And now you love teaching a lot. For sure. Yeah. Right, say say hello to your kids. Say hello to your yeah. students. I think some of your students are watching now. Um, yes, this is Joe. Hey, Joseph. Right. Your your assignments are due tomorrow. Don't be late. <laughs> yes, that's um, not a joke. <laughs> what what do you like the most about being a teacher? I like the fact that Cambodian students want to be there. They want to learn. Mm -hmm. you know, and I feel I, I feel um, sort of fulfilled doing a job where I know that I'm I'm helping, hopefully helping um, some individuals to, to better their lives and better their families' Thanks. lives. Um, yeah, it's, it's rewarding. Rewarding, that's right. Okay. Um, throughout the years of my teaching career experience, I I feel the same way. Yeah. I really love um, when when I see my students' success, especially I remember a time. I used to teach at a school um, for about two, three years. So I left that school and I went to AC. And, uh, and after that, uh, I remember a time when my student texted me, right? So he texted me and then he told me that he was um, accepted to IFL, like um, one, of the, one of the most famous um, university uh, of schools in, in Cambodia. And he was so happy. And um, the things that made me so happy was that he told me that I was the first one he told that he got accepted, uh, he passed the intern exam. So, you know, as a teacher and I, you know, we, we separated for, for a few years and then he still remember, remember me as a teacher. And I think I appreciate it a lot. And I think that's, that's what makes teachers, most of the teachers happy rather than having a lot of money, but respects and, and, um, how do you how do you say that? Like uh, being appreciated, right? For sure, for sure. I 100% right. agree. I mean, um, I know a lot of people who have got a lot of money and they've got jobs that they earn a lot of money in, but they're really not happy in those jobs, um, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, 
when when the students when you can tell the students want to be there it's it's it makes our job so much easier and it's, it just feels so nice yeah all right yes uh you were completely right so um here comes to what we are waiting for some of our viewers are waiting for um we would like to, to for you to share some of uh, um, the experience to younger uh, uh, Cambodians here a lot of young people in Cambodia wish to live or at least wish to study in a, in a different country let's say England right okay so uh, what are some uh tips and advice that you can give to them okay um I I think I've got quite a few tips for you. So the first, the first couple are, are about trying to save the money. Okay, so if you was to go and work in, in a Western country, um, I would actually advise if you're in a main city like London, I would advise that you looked into house sharing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very good way to save money. Um, and also, it's a it's a really good opportunity to actually meet new people. So house sharing is a good option. Right, house sharing. Uh, did you share the house when you first arrived in Cambodia? Uh, kind of. I suppose you could say that. I did live with a friend. I've lived mm -hmm. with a couple of friends. Mm -hmm. um, but, so yes, um, not it's not quite the same thing. Um, because I already knew these people, mm -hmm. they were friends already. But like I said, uh, I think the, the the best example for myself would probably be um, in relation to me staying in hostels in comparison right. to hotels. Cool. Because when I first came here, I'd stay in hotels um, which were more expensive. Yes. So, for example, getting your own place in London. But then when I realised you could stay in a hostel which was mm -hmm. cheaper. And that's where you actually meet people and connect and learn where to go, where not to go. So I would highly advise to house share if you're living in, in, a, in a main city because the rent and the council tax can be a lot. So the rent so, is so high. It, it is, it is. It's getting higher and higher every day. It is, yeah, <laughs> it is. All right. So um, uh, uh, how about the, uh, oh, have you finished? Me? No, no, no. So, so there's some more. So okay, also to try and save you money. Um, now it depends how long you're planning to stay there for. Um, but if you're going to be doing a, a three year or four year university course, I would definitely look into actually buying a car. Um, because I know cars here are super expensive. But in England, they're so ch and in lots of places in Europe, they're actually really cheap. Um, whereas public transport can actually be really expensive. So, like I said, if you're, if you're staying there for three or four years, it's, you'll probably be better off actually buying a car. Um, I think, I could be wrong, but you'll have to research this, but I think a yearly train pass is about £7,000 mm -hmm. for the train. So, um, but in England, I mean, you could buy a, a Prius for less than £1,000. Less than a thousand um, pounds. Less than a thousand pounds you can buy a Prius for, or about I'm a thousand. I'm a thousand. moving to England. I'm moving to England <laughs> just, just to buy a car. But, but but then but then you have to bear in mind you have to have insurance. Mm -hmm. so you have to pay insurance. Oh, yes. And you have to pay tax. So I'm not sure how much it works out altogether, but it's going to be cheaper than a yearly train ticket. And you got to pay the gasoline too, maintenance. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah, you you will have to do the maths, but I'm pretty sure if you got yourself a little cheap car, I'm pretty sure it'll be cheaper than getting a, a yearly train ticket. Yeah. Right, right, okay. So, um, talking about the public transportation, I enjoyed a lot. Um, when we started running, uh, the city bus here in in uh, in the city, okay. even though I didn't have anywhere to go, I just hop on the bus, pay the money, and enjoy the ride, and come back home just like that. We didn't. I actually, we, <laughs> It's funny I that the same. Yeah. Yes, yes. We I, used to do the no, same. I have watched a lot of movies. I've watched a lot of movies like oh, they have the city bus, they they got trained inside their city and so on. Here in Phnom Penh, we didn't have it. We didn't have the train. We still don't have the train uh, around the city. We um we didn't have the bus and you know, 
And then when we got the box, I was so excited to, to run on the box. Right. Okay, yes. just I'm, I'm sorry, just moved on with, with, with your advice. Please share with us more. Yeah, no, um, uh, more advice. So that was about saving money. Um, yeah, I just, I just, just prepare to, to have a, a great experience. Um, I'm sure you, you'll really enjoy it, make the most of it. Um, try to travel around as much as possible. Um, be friendly. Be open and friendly, as I'm sure you will be. Um, you'll make some good friends and get advice, get first-hand advice from people. Mm -hmm. but I would definitely try to travel around as much as poss possible and just get the most out of learning about a different culture and about their history. I think it will uh, it will definitely help you in life, help you grow as a person. It has for me. Um, it will help you develop skills that will pay off in relation to relationships with people in general and work. So, yeah, just make the most of it. And, um, yeah, I would definitely advise to try to travel around um, as much as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard uh, people are saying traveling is not expensive. How, how do you think about that? Traveling in England? Uh, I mean, around the world, like oh. they say, they say, if you have the will, if you want to travel, you just pack your bag and go. That's what they say. Right. OK. What do you think? <laughs> they, they, they must be rich people you're talking to. Manu. <laughs> um, um, I, I, I understand what they're saying. So so when I when I left England, um, I literally had a big bag, a big rucksack mm -hmm. with my life inside there, everything in, in my rucksack. And I, I think I only had about three thousand pounds in the bank, um, so which I don't think is a lot of money when you're when you're um, moving over the other side of the world. So you you can do it as long as mm -hmm. you've got a plan and a goal to sort of get a job eventually. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you you don't need a ton of money to to travel. Mm -hmm. um, it can be done. Like I said, I I didn't come with a lot. Um, but obviously I, I found work very shortly after, so. All right. So what do you say to people who are watching this and people who are prepared to go out, uh, living there on their own and, and probably living in, uh, living in African countries, what do you say uh, to, the, to them? Um, so again, make the most of it. Don't just get, um, try not to just get drawn into just studying and going home and just hanging out in the local area. There's gonna be people um, that want a similar experience to you. Um, so as long as you, you stay safe, get advice and stay safe, um, learn, learn about the different places and, and explore. Um, try to get as much out of the experience as possible um i think i think most cambodian people would would get on fine in in england and uh any western country um mm. if they remain the same as they are here if they remain polite and respectful so try not to be nervous um talk to people share your experiences i'm sure they'll be really interested to hear what what cambodia is like um obviously remember there are dangerous places in every country so you know seek advice on places to avoid and and uh general differences in in cultural norms um yeah that that'd probably be it i think wow that's right that's it very good uh, very good experience sharing and good advice as well right okay so um, i'm listening to you it's it's, it's like um uh i uh, i learn a lot from you and it's like you are telling me, hey, uh, minutes. If you go out, you do this and do that, right? Okay, it's so fun to listen to. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Joe. Thank you so much for all the experience and the journey you've shared with us. And we hope you like here a lot, and we hope you continue to like and to, to like and live in here. Okay, we hope to see you uh, again, maybe in the next shows. Um, we we hope to see you again in the show. Probably, okay. thank yeah, probably thank soon. Try right? and talking about. Um, more exciting things. <laughs> my, my pleasure. It's good to see you again, and and I hope I hope it helped. I hope something helped. Um, and yeah, wish you all the best. All right. So, um, from London to Phnom Penh. All right.
from London to Phnom Penh and uh, maybe remain in Phnom Penh for a long while before you decide to either stay here or probably move to a different country. I think COVID's decided that for me anyway, man. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you, Thank COVID. You. And yes, um, we learned a lot of things from, from COVID. If you take this opportunity to not hate, not um, staying, if, if we keep on um, complaining about the COVID-19 and so we're not doing anything, I don't think we are this positive. Look at this man. Look at Joe. His smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Joe, do you have anything to say to our audience um, before we end the show? Um, just as I said before, make the most of your experience. Stay safe. Um, and yeah, wish you luck. If you have any questions, if you have any further questions, I'm sure that they will uh, direct them through you, Manit, and I'll be happy to, to help if, if anyone has any other specific questions they'd like to ask. Right, so um, very sure. So uh, if you guys have any questions and if you uh, want us to answer, please don't forget to leave the comments or you can text to our Facebook page, The Reflection, or you guys can find me on Facebook, Minute no, 9, uh, I have both um, profile, uh, a Facebook profiles and also a page if you would like to spare some time to go and like that page. Uh, I normally post some contents online. Um, recently, I've been too, too busy doing the work and, and so on and with, with the family. So um, I'm planning on posting more content, sharing with you guys some advice on something I have learned so far uh, throughout the years. And right, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everyone. All right, I hope everybody the best and I see you next time. Thank you, Joe. Bye. And yeah, thank you for your time, man. No worries. All bye right. bye. Bye bye. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Um, we, our shows will be on the next session. So please don't forget to uh, like and uh, share this video to your friends so that your friend can learn some new things. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everyone. I see you next time. Bye. Goodbye.